Uh, my name is Brandon Sherrick. Um, I'm 5'11", and right now I am 244. Yep, very first um, local MPC show, um, first show I'll, I'll, I'll ever be competing in. Um, tried to do one last year and got caught up with COVID, so looking to finish up one officially this year. Yeah. Okay, man, so go ahead and tell us a little bit about we did arms, a little bit of shoulders and chest today. Yep, we did, um, we did the first um, chest day. So we did a little bit of incline um, dumbbell. I like slow controlled movements. I'm not big into trying to ego lift or max out. So a lot of my size are built off of negatives, um, slow controlled work, um, and then just slightly moving it up a little bit every week, trying to better myself like two pounds here, five pounds there. Maybe it's two extra reps at the end, just a little bit more, a little better, you know. Yeah, I don't try to. I don't try to sling weight anymore. Like after having two surgeries, everything has to be controlled. Everything's got to be good form. Like if the rep doesn't look good and it doesn't, it doesn't feel good. It's not good form. Like I lower the weight. If I can't do it well, and if I don't feel like I'm controlling the weight, I'll go down until I can. Yeah. So how did you hurt your shoulder one? In high school, um, I used to wrestle. So back-to-back -back, um, seasons of wrestling, two surgeries, uh, yeah, took took me down. I, like, took all my pretty much all my high school sports out. Yeah. yeah. And then after that, you're in rehab and therapy, like, trying to get your shoulder back. And they teach you to slow down and control your movements. So everything bodybuilding just came naturally after that. I was always lifting for sports, so I was never lifting for size. Everything was to get faster, or stronger, um, to help the sport. But when I finally got to slow down and it wasn't for a sport, like my genetics, I felt like are there. My workouts were always tailored for endurance, agility, to get just to get better at your sport. And then when I put on extra weight, I put on extra size, like uh, in my workouts, everything was everything just started flowing for bodybuilding. I didn't want to power lift. I didn't really want to be known as lifting all the heavy weights. Like my body grows well, so I was just like, let's pick bodybuilding as your sport. Yeah, you like that look, right? I I love it because I I've always been a bigger guy, so it, being skinny has never been my style. Yeah, yeah I've just naturally been bigger yeah. growing up. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, I'm sorry, I mean, yeah. We, we did, um, no, no, you're fine. We did incline dumbbell bench. We did, I do a little bit of flat bench, but not much. It, um, I feel my shoulder clicking and hinging when I do a lot of flat bench. So I try to stay away from the, the motions that inflame it or hurt it more. Um, then we did a lot of shoulders. Shoulders I've been working years at to try to keep my shoulder safe, to try to get it stronger. Um, and then a lot of good tricep workouts. Triceps are some of my favorites. Triceps and biceps, obviously I'm huge into arms. That's my favorite body part. Um, but isolating the different movements in my triceps and my biceps, those are my favorites, yeah. Always been, always <laughs> been like my best muscle group is my arms, yeah. I feel like most people, someone has that one group where it kind of yeah. like grows very easily or that's all I wanted to work out was my arms like it, everything else was disproportionate my legs were the si same size as my arms all I wanted to do was work out arms because they grew instantly yeah yeah well and it's got to be more uh, encouraging and inspiring or motivating when you can see something grow that fast you, it's like, you just get instant reward yeah yeah, instant gratification. Every time you go to the gym, you'd see a new muscle pop out. You see a new change. Yeah. It's hard not to want to work your arms out when every time you work them out, they just get better and better and better. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, let's talk a little bit about, um, so you're working with uh, Dom now. 
Yep. Let's talk about what you, how your diet off season has been and how things are progressing now as you're starting your prep. So off season, um, I wasn't working with Dom per se. I wasn't like do my check-ins with him strictly on a diet with him. Um, but I wanted to keep with his progress. So I would just copy, like I would copy his workouts and his diet. And then to try to grow in the off season, I just started upping the food. And then it's been interesting watching him redo my diet and him take control over one, the workouts and the diet and seeing how much my body has changed and honestly how much weight I've lost. Cause I was just eating everything I could find. I was, I would go extreme, like make a plate of food and then take another bag of food, blend it and drink the food while you're eating just to try to put more calories in, get no, bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. nothing else to do yeah and you had an interesting job but it seemed like um you like always had to have the outlines like you weren't fat no like you were like my body solid, yeah know? my body i don't i'm blessed like i have great genetics and it my body just takes food and makes it muscle and i have to remember to not take that for granted but i can eat 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 and still maintain a relatively aesthetic physique yeah. it's been that's why I love bodybuilding so much because my body is tailored for it. Like the, my genetics are built to do this. Like why not do what you, what comes naturally to you? It's not like the old Dave Priest where you see him, he put on like a hundred pounds. Oh yeah, I don't he have to dirty like bulk like that. Better, you know? I've I've heard about him at dirty bulking like that and like my you body. Yeah. I've tried to grow like that and just eat, 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 and I'm just uncomfortable. I've noticed like your my cardio, my cardio is off, and like my my meals are way too much. I'm uncomfortable. I'm not like my breathing gets bad. And my my workouts are slower. I feel a lot better right now. I'm the lightest I've been, but I feel the best physique I'm, I'm putting forth. Like I don't need to be 260 pounds to look my best. I think it's like 12 or 13, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, no, I think you're pretty, you're already starting your glute line. I feel good about it, yeah. pretty good. Yeah. I mean, that's awesome. We get a lot of time to work with yeah. what, what the package is right now, yeah. Yeah. No, and I think you're that far ahead anyway. I mean, I mm -hmm. for your size and stuff and being your first show, usually most preps, I feel like people are behind. Uh, yeah. For their first prep. And now maybe it's because last year, well, you yeah. could go and then it was like everything else we kept like I just kept trying to keep the progress going I knew I wanted to finish a show so I didn't throw it away like yeah I ate a lot in the off season but like everything following Dom's workouts and following his diet plan about 70 80 percent we just took all the progress from all of the work we did last year and just doubled it so now going into this one I feel like I'm it's been two preps smashed into one and this is two years worth of progress in the making so I, I feel well ahead of where I where I was last year which is good I come I kind of compare the pictures from last year and this year and my posing I feel like it's better my overall physique I feel like it's better and I just feel like I'm much more prepared than last year yeah and like, so people understand too this isn't like this is your you're getting ready for your first you've, this is your first show yeah like, not your first national show or your first you know national qualifier this is your first show like ever Ever. I've talked about bodybuilding um, since I was 14 or 15, just thinking about getting serious about it. And it's always been something I've put in front of it and something I've put off. I've been insecure or I haven't had the confidence to go out there. Like, I'll get in my head or not think I'm ready. Like, the stars will line up perfectly to where you're going to be this amazing guy on, on stage instead of just going out and doing it. And coming up on 28 like I finally I'm like let's just do it we gotta just rip that band-aid off and step on stage get your first show done this is the first time for everything well and then you'll know where you stand too right? exactly you'll yeah just be able to see your physique for the first time feel down to see exactly what everything looks like and I have no idea what any of this is going to look like like first time doing a show I have no idea what to expect if I step on stage I feel like that's a win for me yeah, yeah. Uh, completely no dude 
<laughs> for your first show, I, you have some serious size to bring along. I feel good about that. Yeah, it's, I appreciate that. I'm excited to see what happens and then come down with definitely. Uh, you have to catch up as you yeah. post the show and some more videos. Right? I'll keep you posted, yeah. yeah it's going to be impressive, I can feel it. I feel like i got a good starting point with like 12 weeks to go. Yeah. I can't imagine what 12 more weeks of work is going to put on this. Okay. Yeah. I trust him 100 percent every little thing is planned out accordingly everything is tracked monitored i'm the one that's got to be the responsible one dom follows whatever i show him and makes adjustments to it i gotta be i'm the one that's got to be diligent and honest with it but everything is down to a t the amount of water the amount of steps you take the grams and all your food everything is planned accordingly there's no there's no gaps no wiggle room no guesswork I don't have to think at all. I, Dom tells me what to do. He says, eat this, I eat this, and tells me to work that out, I do that. That's awesome. Some people like yeah. more of a, but then I know people who like, some people like more of a macro approach, and they like being able to pick up. Yeah, I don't want to think about it. Yeah, I, I want to be an athlete. I just yeah. want to step out. You tell me what to do. You say, this is going to win. I'll do that. And that's why you hire the coach. Yeah. Point. And then you don't have to worry about it. So you get close to your brain. Mm -mm. like fried a little bit. I don't know why you're removing this this piece of food from my diet or why you're adding this, but you're the one you're the one that puts it together, so I don't have to worry about it. What's your cardio? Cardio right now, um, I'm on the elliptical for I was doing four times a week for 15 minutes, basically 150 calories. We had it tallied up to, and we just bumped that up to four another four times a week for 20 minutes. It's basically. 200 calories per session so he's keeping i think the calorie or the cardio is relatively low for now keeping my size but anytime he anytime he ups cardio or drops a little bit of food my body responds like that yeah. so you it's, said just like within a week uh-huh like like i went yeah i think i lost anywhere from four to six pounds pretty fast yeah yeah it seems like I'll have to, yeah, I look yeah. back on the on the weekly check-ins and see like, oh wow, we lost that much. I'll I'll fluctuate like three four pounds in a day sometimes. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Um, go ahead and tell people a little bit about your job, man. I found it. My job, yeah. I don't know if it was just COVID and I had COVID overload or something, but I thought it was really interesting, man. And yeah. Seeing the stuff that you have come in there, that's awesome. So my job, I work I work at a pawn shop, um, right in, right outside of Utica. Um, on Hall Road called Five Star Pawn Shop. Um, but I am in charge of running the gun department there. So any guns that come in, buying, selling, trading, um, I'm in charge of that. So all the way through COVID, kept myself busy by posting the coolest guns I could find, all the cool guns that came in. And that kind of got me um, like the itch, the love to sell guns. And that's what I want to do grow, like going forward. I want to eventually move on to owning my own gun store my maybe arrange to maybe sell i don't know specialize in shotguns or or ars like i i just love i love the hustle of it i'm a salesman but i also love like the art in a lot of the guns i see whether it's a a fancy ar build or whether it's an old-fashioned revolver the history behind it there's so many different facets of this job that keep you excited to go back to work yeah. like what am i going to find today i watch the ups guy or the fedex guy bringing boxes and i'm like what's what's going to be in it today yeah. like is it going to be uh is it going to be a 1911 like 1920s age gun or am i going to get a souped up ar like What's coming? What am I going to see today? So how does that work? You guys, like, or you'll buy stuff from people online or people send stuff in there? There's, there's tons of different ways I get guns in and out. Um, I will peruse off of selling sites, like sites called Arms List and Gun Broker. I will be messaging people back and forth, trying to make deals. Um, people will come in on their own, wanting to sell guns, wanting to buy guns. Um, you can find avenues towards guns anyway, like even on Facebook. Um, even though they try to police it, there's different ways you can go around trying to find guns, buy them, sell them. Um, 
But a lot of a lot of my guns come in. It was through dealers, and then COVID, COVID shot everything up. All all the prices, all the demand went up. Then it tanked. So now all the prices are are off, and I have to hunt each gun individually because pricing is. Because now people don't aren't no. For guns anymore. There's not the rush of last year. Last year was the probably the biggest biggest year for guns in American history right? yeah, in like since that. since the beginning yeah. I don't think we've ever sold more guns than we did last I year because it's not like a Republican thing anymore I know no. a lot of Democrats I have Democrat friends I've heard a lot of Democrat celebrities it's just an American thing guns. yeah like Bill Maher is a huge Democrat he went out yeah. guns like there was a fear going on that like you weren't going to be able to get a gun yeah well, you saw people fighting over toilet paper. Oh, my gosh. So what do you think's going to happen if, like, we ran out of food or meat or... You didn't have a gun to... Yeah. You know, to protect like, yourself. No, I, I feel like an idiot. You, <laughs> you should never feel like... You should never be made to feel dumb about not knowing something. Like, something that might seem expected or manly. Like, not knowing guns does not mean you're any more or less... Like, but I feel like a lot of times people are like gun shop owners and gun enthusiasts will make you feel less for not knowing just the basics. Well, dude, dude, if some little guy comes in, some dirty guy and sees you too. Well, then it's intimidating. You, guns yeah. and guns, yeah. But yeah. honestly, like full disclosure, I learned almost everything I know about guns on on the job. Like my knowledge of guns before. And my knowledge of guns now, I had to fake it till I made it. Like, yeah. I didn't know much at all. I grew up in a hunting family, so I knew about a, like a rifle and a shotgun. I had never shot a pistol or done much with guns before. I knew how to talk to people and sell things, but I didn't know anything about calibers or gun knowledge or anything like that. You guys have, I know you guys have some nerdy stuff. Too. I saw some rare toys. We have so many <laughs> weird stuff that come in, like. <laughs> You just you never know what's gonna come into a pawn shop. So I see fun guns, but we'll get crazy. The weirdest stuff come into a pawn shop. That I think if I remember you had like I think you had a giant like it's a sideshow collectible Grievous. I remember. Uh huh. It's like, I, I can't remember if it's still there or not, but just weird stuff like that. We had a Lamborghini hood, not not the Lamborghini, but just the Lamborghini hood on the wall. I've had I've had old like Confederate bills, old old money we've had roman coins come in some old stuff like that and first this prep i'd like to thank my coach for sticking with me um i mean last year we worked so hard and dom stuck with me the whole way until until i flaked out and i broke on my diet um and ended up bailing out of the show and dom was really good about it he was really understanding he jumped back on board with me as being my coach has supported me all the way through this um but Dom's been just really understanding and for all the work he put in and then having me not finish the show I'm just it's been awesome having a coach that's not giving up on me him first I'd definitely like to thank him I'd like to thank my girlfriend Mariah she right now is probably the reason I'm as cut and shredded as I am right now she helped me meal prep um which I hate meal prepping. I I can't. St- I love having all my food ready a week out. I just hate all the work. I hate the shopping. I don't want to. It's all a part of it. It it's tough. But she, I would make food. I'm like I don't care how it tastes. I just wish like take the food, make the muscle my food would just be as bland as possible and she she would come in and spice it up season it cook it right make it taste good so i can bodybuild and still enjoy my food my food was just like cardboard before i was i was a machine like i didn't care if i if i could blend it all up and drink it or put it in a put it in a capsule just drink my food i would she she is she (laughs) i don't I was amazed when I was looking through her Instagram. It's crazy. She has a gift like that. Yeah, I think everybody's got their gift. Hers, of course, absolutely is um is art. Yeah, dude, it was those drawings. I'm like, man, I'm a stick figure guy. Uh huh. Totally 
she makes it she makes that look easy like that's her thing she makes art look easy when she does it yeah. i can go out and body build and make building muscle look easy i can't draw a straight line to save my life she's just the, some of the stuff she does it's incredible yeah yeah <laughs> you gotta have a little your area of what you're good at yeah what I like else to think my family um, they have been relatively supportive through the whole thing um, for as little as they know about bodybuilding they've been behind me 100% um, they've helped me last year they helped me afford the show like I was working through COVID um, I had just moved into a new place um, paying all my new we never closed so no we were it's interesting pawn shops got this little clause in where we're a financial institution we're considered a bank so for some reason we were allowed to stay open as a as an essential business well, they probably thought people would be like if you're running out of money you'd start selling stuff right because well they would yeah there were regular people selling stuff like i had i had like third grade teachers coming in desperate for desperate to pay their bills people that you would never see in a pawn shop and we had to stay open to support a lot of people so where a lot of people closed and went on unemployment we kind of skated past that by being a financial institution by being a bank helping people get through the no money situation yeah but yeah my family um well my job i love what i do um they my my bosses support me financially. They support me. Um, they're cool with me eating three, four, having three, four lunch breaks a day. Like, I get the flexibility to do that. And having a job that, like, you can you can have your your hobby or you can have your sport and not be so all all into your job. I have I have to bodybuild and I have to do my work. And it's like trying to balance both. I need time to make a meal quick. I need time to, to run into the back shop to wolf a meal down quick. Yeah. And they're really good about allowing me the flexibility to do that. Dude, I can tell you, like, Jello, like most people don't take pride in when I work at Jello, yeah. but I can tell you really like it. I do. videos, you can tell, like, you're taking time to show the stuff and you yeah. enjoy it. When I got placed into that role, um, we had one of our, the guy who was running the shop, the gun store before, he left to do his own thing and basically the whole gun department got dropped on my shoulders and I was like I'm excited for the responsibility of all this but I I know n not nearly what I want to know about it and I don't know enough about how to run this so it's been a cool experience trying to study it all trying to learn it all I feel an ownership towards it when things are running well I'm feeling good about the store like I almost feel like it's that side of the store is mine. So you have, I feel like a lot of ownership towards what goes on with the guns, how we do with the ammo, how we sell. It's been, it's been nice having a job that you feel some ownership towards and you, you want to better it. Yeah, you appreciate it. Yeah. Some, yeah, it's something you really be proud of. I like, I like feeling proud of what I do, not just working a job to get a paycheck. Yeah. yeah. That's the thing. I look forward to going to it. I look forward to making it better, doing better, learning more, and putting time off off work hours. And it's been, I haven't always wanted to work after work or put time in on my own. Never really felt an ownership of other jobs like I do this one. Yeah, well, that's probably the same quality as somebody you could buy or two, but yeah. in time and work and, you know. Waking up early, staying up late, making the meals, like things normal, pe most people that are just there to be healthy aren't doing. I, I would love to look like this and not have to wake up at 6.30 every morning to work out for an hour and a half to two hours before I go off to work and get in my cardio. Yeah, I'm, I'm up, I don't wanna be up that early. I'm not a morning person, but if I wanna be, if I wanna be my best, I have to do some things I don't wanna do. Like, which is waking up early. It's hitting the gym five days a week. It's six days a week. It's it's cr making sure you get get to the gym on enough time to get your cardio in. You got to be responsible. Got to eat all your meals. 
It's not like you do well one week and then you flake off the next. You got to keep going every single day. Do you ever have a hard time eating your foods? Some of the high days, I do. If I don't start my meals, like if I'm not on them early, I feel like I'm playing catch up throughout the day. Mm-hmm. And then it's tough. Like I'll, I'll watch the clock and I'm like, wow, we have four more meals to go. And that's a lot of food on some of those high days. And I'm like, okay, we can do this. And then I'll find myself at midnight. It's basically into the next day. I'm like, all right, we've got to finish <laughs> this last meal. I'm like, all right, got one more meal. Like we got to do it. And you're going to bed sometimes feeling super full, bloated, whatever. And sometimes it's not like the plan is designed. You'd like some digestion time, but a lot of things you're just you're just getting through. Some days are better than others. Some days aren't. It's not always pretty, but like I said, not everything lines up like you want it to. Especially trying to get all your meals in. It, going to the gym is e- is easy. Crushing a workout is easy it's the stuff you do outside of the gym getting enough sleep getting all your meals in keeping your stress low like those factors are are the hardest parts for me like the little details on the side that nobody sees that's the stuff that's that's the most important for me awesome yeah killing your prep we'll definitely catch up with you maybe in like four weeks yeah I'd love that. Yeah, this was this was an awesome first experience for me. Oh God! Right. Like, oh, you look crazy, man. I think you're gonna do well. So. Well, I appreciate it. I can't wait to see the final product. I'm definitely shooting. Oh. I know. Last year, everything got messed up with COVID and everything, so it's really good. This year, I'm. I feel like I'm one and a half times better than I was last year. So, I can't wait to see in 12 weeks what what this is all gonna look like. I think it's gonna be great. Yeah. So I said for a lot of top level pros. And I'd like. Lastly, I'd like to thank you. I mean, I've been, we've been in contact for what, a year and a half, two years? And you're like, all right, when do you want to shoot? I'm like, I think I'm ready. I don't know if I'm ready yet. I think I'm ready. No, no, no. Give me, give me like two more weeks. Give me, give me four more weeks. And you've been understanding through the whole thing, like my ups and my downs, like, and then finally, finally just pulling off a shoot together, finally getting it, getting it together. And you haven't, bailed on me you haven't gotten like no you gotta be ready you're feeling you're ready your own some people some people get tired of waiting um tired of like people saying they're gonna show up and not show up and that's been a struggle with me finally just doing what i say i'm gonna do following through so you being understanding the whole way through has been awesome yeah like i said wait till you see pictures from 